Ozark Highlands Radio is brought to you by the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas. A wonderful way to enjoy yesterday. On the web at ozarkfolkcenter.com. And by Stone Bank, a community bank supporting entrepreneurs and farmers nationwide with loans guaranteed by the USDA, SBA, and Farm Services Agency. Learn more at stonebank.com. And the Arkansas Arts Council, empowering the arts for the benefit of all Arkansans. On the web at arkansasarts.org. And by the Committee of 100 for the Ozark Folk Center, preserving Ozark folk culture since 1974 through music roots, craft apprenticeships, and the Heritage Herb Garden. Learn more at ofc100.org. Howdy, folks. This is Dave Smith, host of Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome to our show. It's dulcimer jamboree time once again. Each year, dulcimer players from all over come to the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas, for a weekend of learning, listening, and loving all things dulcimer. We'll enjoy highlights recorded from live performances featuring both mountain dulcimers and the more ancient hammered dulcimers. I'll be making my weekly visit down to the vault, and professor and historian Dr. Brooks Blevins explores scary Ozark monster stories. That's this week on Ozark Highlands Radio. For many years now, the Ozark Folk Center has hosted a yearly dulcimer jamboree, which draws talented musicians from all around the country. Artists performing this year included Kara Barnard, Ben Hagwood, Ken Kalodner, Mary Ann Michael, Karen Mueller, Colin Beasley, and our own Ozark original, Pam Setzer. On this week's show, we'll feature live performances by all of these talented musicians. Let's start the show with a set by educator, songwriter, and award-winning mountain dulcimer player Kara Barnard who was the 2022 National Mountain Dulcimer Champion. Thank you very much. I'm going to start out with a really slow song to set the mood. <laughs> originals that I've written for you tonight. Um, that last one that I wrote uh, was called Calico Rising. Now I have, um, sometimes when I write instrumentals uh, with no words, I'm like, I struggle a little bit with what to name them. Um, I have a very large, round, loud calico cat. And when I, when I finished writing that song, she stood up. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is a song that I wrote about a garden. I call it The Garden. <laughs> Down a pine needle path through the dark woods damp and cool from the rain the trees open up to the meadow surrounded by sleepy white clouds 
And the field is as warm as the sunshine And the sunshine as bright as her eyes She sits where she faces her garden Moist and dark from the rain And the warmth from the sunlight It kisses her face And the grass from the field stains her hands And she smiles and she laughs For somehow she knows Tomorrow will be just as grand A jar of herbs floating in water Darkens and blends with the day A dragonfly taps on the clover And carries the moment away Her hair lightly touches the back of her neck The jimson weed bows to the field the daisies curtsy in circle A dog that lies sleepy and warm And the warmth from the sunlight It kisses her face And the grass from the field Stains her hands And she smiles and she laughs For somehow she knows Tomorrow will be just as grand Tomorrow will be Thank you very much. I am now going to do for you one of the songs that I did in Winfield, Kansas last September that helped me win the national title. Now, I don't know if, if, um, if this is a regional thing or not, but this song is called Jerusalem Ridge. Do you all play Jerusalem Ridge here? No, not at all? Never heard that song before in your life? Okay. Jerusalem Ridge was written by Bill Monroe. I'm from Indiana. Bill Monroe Park, where we have the big bluegrass festival every year, is just a few miles down from my cabin. And um, so what I like to do is I like to take really well-known fiddle tunes, and I'm questioning how well-known it is here tonight, and I like to really twist them up and then bring them back home and do them the way they were meant to be played. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sense of urgency by doing this. Right? Does that make you feel a little like, oh my gosh, something's happening? Okay. We're going to start out like that. Here we go. Everybody think good thoughts for me because this is a hard piece.
you see me do this, there's only one reason I do that. That's just to impress you. So when you see me do that, like this, I would like for you to respond with, oh. Can we try it? Good, thank you. I would, like, whoa, whoa. You're welcome to use that. I was playing a show with Bing, Bing, Bing Futch one day, and, um, or one uh, weekend in Kentucky somewhere, and I brought him in on stage, and I said, Bing, I want to show you a little trick. I said, watch this, and I went like this, without any explanation, the whole audience went, whoa. <laughs> Please welcome Karen Mueller to the stage. Howdy, everybody. Are you having fun yet? We are having a blast. So I told, um, I told some of my students in the last class that I taught today that we were going to do this, that we had never played before, ever, and uh, we hadn't practiced. That's right. And by golly, that's how we like it. That's right. Sounds good. About as good as it's going to get from this one anyway. All right. <laughs> I'm going to start this off with a verse. You do that. This is a song that everyone probably knows. As a matter of fact, if you've got your instruments with you, you can go ahead and play it with us. Now, about 30 years ago, I was in Winfield, Kansas, and I heard Mike Cross do this song, and all I could remember was, Lord, preserve us and protect us. We've been drinking whiskey for breakfast. I drove all the way home from Indiana trying to remember what the lyrics were, what the verses were. I could not remember them. I got home. That was before a lot of internet happened, stuff was happening. So, I mean, I got on the phone to a few people. I said, what are the verses? No one could tell me. I, I just went ahead and wrote them. So here we go. You ready? I woke one morning in the mountain pines. Walking down the road, I was feeling fine. I saw a woman from afar. She was drinking whiskey from a cannon jar. Singing, Lord, preserve us and protect us. She's been drinking whiskey for breakfast. A cow's on the road. She falls down, the jar gets thrown. A cow lets out a great big yawn. The jar goes in and the whiskey's gone. Singing, Lord, preserve us and protect us. That cow's been drinking whiskey for breakfast. Here we go. milk from meadow cow <laughs> a jigger of milk from meadow cow make the big the lords come down and bless her utter and to tell you the truth bless her milk with a hundred proof sing lord preserve us and protect us we've been drinking whiskey for breakfast
that was fun. Thank you. Three fine tunes from Indiana-based Kara Barnard. She played a couple of her original tunes, Calico Rising and The Garden, following those with the traditional Whiskey Before Breakfast. Next, we'll hear from a couple of fine musicians who are no strangers to our stage, Hammered Dulcimer master Ben Hagwood, accompanied by Arkansas State fiddle champion Kaylee Speaks, playing the Cherokee Shuffle. so very much. We are excited to be back here at the Ozark Folk Center. It is always a pleasure. Next one we're going to do for you is very well known. It is a waltz, so if you want to dance, now's your chance. Ben Hagwood and Kaylee Speaks, also known as Blackberry Summer, knocking out a couple of tunes, the Cherokee Shuffle and Jay Unger's beautiful composition, The Lover's Waltz. We've got lots more great music for you from our dulcimer jamboree. But after this break, come with me down to the vault for a visit with our producer, Jeff Glover. You're listening to Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome back to Ozark Highlands Radio. You know, every week about this time I go down to the vault, uh, Jeff Glover's putting in time down there now, kind of straightening up things. Uh, I've got a question for him. Let's go down and see him. Uh, Jeff, are you here? Jeff? Now Jeff's not here. Well, Kathy Jensen, how are you doing? Hey, Dave. I'm doing great. How and about you? I'm good, but I don't, I've never seen you down here. What are you doing? Yeah, I was just looking for some old recordings. And uh, actually just waiting for Jeff to get back from the heirloom kitchen. He's gone oh. after scones. Scones. Oh, boy. I hope he brings more than just one back. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Hey, uh, um, well, I'll tell you what I came to see Jeff about. There's a song that's been on my mind lately, an old, old, very old song. came from the British Isles, I guess. Uh, green Sleeves. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, great song. I, you probably do Green Sleeves, don't you? I haven't in a long time, but I, I should. It's, yeah, I know it's you're just a one of those beautiful... Fine piano player and singer. Uh, you know, Jeff's got things pretty well in order here. Maybe you can... Do you have a way of looking it up here? Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me look over here in this corner. Wow, 
Wow, here it is. Here it is. There's a, a recording by Tom and Gene Simmons. Oh, Tom and Gene. That's going to be a good one for sure. Yeah. Tommy was uh, he was the mayor here in Mountain View back when the Folk Center first opened up. Was back he? in the 19, oh. early 1970s. And he and Gene played here for years and years yeah. along with their daughter Pam. In fact, we featured him on this very segment a few times. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. really excited, though, to hear Gene's good dulcimer playing. Let's listen to it. All righty. Boy, that's a pretty song. Gorgeous. And it sure sounds gorgeous. like Jean, all right. She, yeah. She promoted the dulcimer all over the state of Arkansas and really all over the country. I believe she played in Washington, D.C. with it. Wow. Yeah. That's where Pam is right now, I think, or uh -huh. on her way. Uh huh. Well, hey, look, thanks <laughs> so much for looking that up. And uh, when you see Jeff, uh, see if he's got an extra scone, okay? All righty. All right. Good bye, Kathy. Bye bye. Let's get back to some good music recorded on our stage at the 2023 Dulcimer Jamboree. Mary Lynn Michael is a hammered dulcimer teacher and performer from Middletown, Maryland. Here she teams up with her neighbor, Baltimore native Ken Kalodner, for a couple of rousing tunes.
Marilyn hammered dulcimer masters Ken Kalodner and Mary Lynn Michael. In that set, they hammered out Coleman's March and a traditional tune from Denmark, the Rumpling Quadrille. Another old friend of ours, one we've featured many times at our dulcimer jamboree, is Karen Mueller, who makes the long drive from her home in Minnesota to teach workshops at our jamboree. Here she plays a couple of interesting tunes, Music for a Found Harmonium, written by Simon Jeffs in 1984, and her traditional tune, Green, Green, Rocky Road. Thank you very much. This next one I'm going to do is a sing-along, so I hope you're ready for a little callback. This is a call and answer song, and it starts out, I was born in Tennessee, uh, we could say Arkansas. If you want, it just doesn't rhyme with what comes next. So you can, you can plug in any state that you like. I'm actually from Kansas. I was born in Winfield, Kansas, to be precise. How many of you have been to my hometown for the Walnut Valley Festival? Good time. I live in Minnesota now. And yes, we're still having snow. Okay, I'm over it. <laughs> it's, it's great to be here, and it's green. Um, so the, the way that this works is um, I was born in Tennessee. I'll sing a line, and then you sing it back to me. And it's got that question and answer kind of structure. So when I sing it, I'm going to go, I was born in Tennessee. And then you put the period on I was born in Tennessee. And then I'm asking the question again, uh, but you don't get another chance to answer it because I'm already going on to something else. So I really want to hear that callback nice and strong, each verse. And then the chorus goes, green, green, rocky road, promenade in green. Tell me who you love. Tell me who you love. So we'll do that a bunch of times. You'll get, you'll get the hang of it. So here we go. I was born 
born in Tennessee Miss my friends and they miss me Green, green, rocky road Promenade in green Tell me who you love Tell me who you love Let's try that chorus together Green, green, rocky road Promenade in green Tell me who you love Tell me who you originally a children's play uh, yard rhyme. You can kind of tell. I'm going back to Baltimore. I'm going back to Baltimore. That way ten times before Green, green, rocky road Promenade in green Tell me who you love Tell me who you love Follow that bird up in the sky Follow that bird up in the sky He don't walk, he just fly Green, green, rocky road Promenade in green Tell me who you love Tell me who you love Minnesota dulcimer champion Karen Mueller recorded live on our stage in Mountain View, Arkansas. It's time again for a short break. When we return, our friend Dr. Brooks Blevins will share with us some scary tales from the Ozarks. This is Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome back to Ozark Highlands Radio. The Ozarks are well known for being the home of many spinners of tall tales. That's the subject of this week's Back in the Hills. Here's Dr. Brooks Blevins. It seems that we humans love to scare ourselves, or skeer as we say in the Ozarks. Ghost stories around a campfire, horror movies... What writer is more popular than Stephen King? Nowadays, just about all of us are consumers of fright. There are very few skeerers and a whole lot of skeerees. But once upon a time, every little subculture did its own skeering, every community, every family. When folklorist Vance Randolph first moved to the Ozarks about 100 years ago, he heard an incredible number of stories about a wide range of monsters that roamed the hill country, at least in the colorful imaginations of storytellers. Even if you're like me and you grew up in the rural Ozarks, I'll bet you haven't heard of most of our scary creatures, unless you're a right smart agier than I am. So let's go back in the hills and look for some of those old boogers from our own regional mythology. Grab a torch and a pitchfork, it's time to hunt Ozark monsters. Any search for mythical creatures in these hills has to start with a gal row. No monster occupied a more esteemed position in Ozark storytelling. Photographs of the beast are rare, but knowledge passed down by our forebears describes the Galral as a giant reptile, lizard-like, maybe even dragon-like, with long tusks, webbed feet and sharp claws, and a long scythe of a tail, with spikes running its length and own up the Galral's back. It eats hogs, cattle, and other substantial animals for sustenance, and probably for fun, 
and may even develop a taste for humans while lurking in caves or underneath remote rock ledges. One old-timer told Randolph that the Galrau was the unseen star of a carnival swindle years ago. After the barker stirred up the crowd with a florid description of the fiendish beast hidden away in the tent and collected all the nickels from brave gawkers, he retired to the back where, all of a sudden, hideous screeches and the rattling of chains came right before the collapse of the tent, at which point the barker emerged, bloody and breathless, imploring all within earshot to run for their lives, with their money left behind, of course. So prominent was the gal row in Ozark mythology that in 1897 an Arkansas newspaper repeated a traveling salesman's claim that he and some accomplices managed to kill one near the town of Marshall. Devoted above all to furthering scientific knowledge, the salesman forthwith shipped the gal row's hide and skeleton off to that Smithsonian Institute, but somehow the blame thing never made it to Washington. The gal row was just the most common of many reptilian monsters in Ozark lore, there was a blood-sucking dinosaur called the Gimplicute, the High Behind, whose back legs were much longer than its front ones, the Snickle Hoopus, which used the large spiky ball on the end of its tail, not for meanness, but for locomotion, and two different giant versions of the Collared Lizard or Mountain Boomer that roams the glades, one called a King Doodle, and the other localized to Old Cherokee country in northeastern Oklahoma, a wowser known to bite the head off a full-growed cow. Perhaps the most unusual of the Ozark mythical creatures was the Snolfus, an albino deer with tree branches for antlers. The Snolfus could jump even higher than a regular deer, so high that it mostly lived in the treetops. The blue smoke that it exhaled was the source of all those hazy, foggy mornings in the hollers and along the creeks. Old-timers dismissed the Snolfus as harmless, but I'm not buying it. After all, went the legend, if you ever saw one, you weren't long for this world. A worthy rival to the Snolfus was the Side Hill Hoofer, a giant beaver-like animal whose short legs on one side and long ones on the other allowed it to live its whole life on the side of a hill. It couldn't run straight up or down a hill, but had to climb or descend in a gradual spiral fashion. Over time, evolution contributed to two subspecies of Side Hill Hoofer, one that went around the hill clockwise and another counterclockwise. Legend has it that somewhere in Marion County, Arkansas, is a holler full of hoofer bones, for at death the animal simply rolled to the bottom of its hill. The old-timers also told stories of massive birds that would dwarf a buzzard. The area around West Plains, Missouri, was reportedly the roosting place for the Giasticutus. With its 50-foot wingspan, it could carry off the biggest bull. Along the James River in southwestern Missouri, a large black eagle called a galupus was renowned for laying square eggs, while the Philly Lou crane not only flew upside down, but laid its lighter-than-air eggs in an upside-down nest to keep them from floating away. The cat family was also well represented among the feared monsters of the Ozarks, not a great surprise considering how much 19th-century Ozarkers feared the very real mountain lion, which they called a painter. There was the sinister whistling wampus, which lured its victims into the woods with its alluring melody. The galley wampus was an amphibious panther, or maybe just a gigantic otter. And, of course, every place needs a truly aquatic monster. The White River had one, but its home territory seems to have been far downstream in the Arkansas Delta, where the wide, muddy waters provided better cover. The Ozarks didn't discover its Loch Ness-like monster until the 1930s, when fishermen in the newly impounded Lake of the Ozarks claimed to have come upon a massive animal with the neck extending some 20 feet above the surface. Before long, though, speedboat races and party cove barges seem to have scared off the Camden County Sea Serpent. It seems the Ozark collectors didn't leave any recordings recounting the exploits of sea serpents or gal rows, but there's no shortage of big old snake stories. Here's J.H. Ray of Fayetteville, Arkansas, telling his story about saving a regular-sized mountain boomer lizard from a giant bull snake. It was recorded by Merlin Mitchell in 1950 and comes courtesy of the University of Arkansas's Ozark Folk Song Collection. One, sun, one Saturday evening, I saddled up my horse and started out to see my girl 25 miles away. It was awful hot and dry and dusty. I'd rode quite a while and finally I st 
started up a little grade, looked down in the ditch side of the road, and I lay a great big old bull snake, 10 or 12 foot long, and you had a mountain boomer. So I stopped my pony right there while I was watching him. The sure old snake, he'd choke him down, swallow him, choke him down, swallow him. I sat down on my pony and watched him quite a little while. And Finally then, he, he got this mountain boomer all swallowed, but this his little tail, and his little tail would just twitch and twist and shake. Finally, I thought I'd kill him. So I slid out of the saddle and seen a little old mesquite stick there, about two foot long. And I got down and picked up that stick and throwed it to that old snake. And he spit that mountain boomer out and jumped right up in my face. I wheeled and jumped on the Bronco, and away we went, right up the road, just like a Comanche Indian hollering. And the old mountain boomer could outrun us. And we run quite a ways up the road, and the snake had beat out of his dinner. So I guess that's all right now. Thanks, Brooks. Let's get back to some more good dulcimer music from our 2023 Dulcimer Jamboree. Here are a couple of tunes from Mobile, Alabama musician Colin Beasley who won the national championship in 2017. Colin will start with a little of the Johnny Nash song, I Can See Clearly Now. Did y'all know that one? Yeah, there we go. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. So this next one, if um, Eilis is around, is her favorite. There we go. Oh, I hope I play it well today.
That was Alabama dulcimer player Colin Beasley with the beautiful Afro-Cuban lullaby. Now, no show about dulcimer playing in Mountain View, Arkansas would be complete without a tune by one of our favorite local musicians, Pam Setzer. Accompanied here by Blackberry Summer and Gresham McMillan, Pam plays a tune she wrote about a road she used to live on, Crooked Ridge. Crooked Ridge, played by Pam Setzer and friends on the stage of the Ozark Folk Center in Mountain View, Arkansas. I've had a great time this week playing all this fine dulcimer music. I hope you enjoyed it, too. This is your host, Dave Smith. I'll see you next week. Ozark Highlands Radio is produced by Jeff Glover. Executive producer is Darren Dorton. Additional support for this program comes from Arkansas State Parks, a division of the Arkansas Department of Parks, Heritage, and Tourism, with 52 unique reasons to visit the natural state. On the web at ArkansasStateParks.com. The Committee of 100 proudly supporting the Ozark Folk Center State Park since 1974. And by Stone Bank with roots in Mountain View, Arkansas. Stone Bank is a proud supporter of heritage musicians and small towns across America with government guaranteed loans for farmers, entrepreneurs, and communities. More information available at StoneBank.com. For information on upcoming shows and events, we are on the web at OzarkHighlandsRadio.com. Until next time, I'm Donna Farrar. Mm-hmm.